temporary filming locations, so things will look and sound different. Let's take a look at another product from a UK outlet called One Beyond, but this is probably available from other places around the world. And it's the Mood Projection Sunset Lamp. And it says, create an ambient colour mood for your space and enhance the vibe of any selfie or live stream. And then makes a rather bold claim, may help boost mood and improve sleep quality, then justifies that by saying... It is believed that mood lights, like the sunset lamp, can have a positive impact on serotonin and melatonin, which could help to improve sleep, reduce anxiety, and improve your mood. Uh, that said, the light itself came in at £4 for the whole thing, which is just stunning for the components, because you can do a lot with this. So it comes as the base. It also came with this in the end, a sort of foam packer, and a sort of like foam pad in the bottom that is self-adhesive, but that wasn't stuck on. I think that's probably because it might not stick on that well. In fact, it would really just be going onto the rim or they'd have to glue this in somehow, but it's quite useful, to be honest, not to have these because uh, this can actually be repurposed. So the base is steel, the column is steel, they just screw together, and then you get this little swivel at the top that allows you to position it uh, at various angles. And it would actually make a really good sort of like work light as well by creating a good splash of light. The LED, if I can zoom down this, zoom, uh, the LED is marked Cree. I'm not sure how convincing uh, that is, but it's the classic arrangement of an LED at, behind the lens. And it looks very deep when you do this. It gives it a very sort of three-dimensional effect, but it is actually quite shallow on this aluminium head here. So tell you what, I'm going to change the lighting setup here because this is a black surface, not the best for showing you what it looks like. Uh, and I'll show you it lit and then with the colour filters they provide. One moment, please. So without a filter, it produces a very even wash in the middle, but with that characteristic spectral fringing at the edge, quite nice actually, a little sort of rainbow effect. And uh, that is quite a bright beam. I'm not sure that well, we can work out the power is from the resistor inside and the LED. But even shone across the room, it will create a nice splash in the wall. And you can, because this can be angled, you can point at the ceiling. Let me show you the other filters in. So here's the yellow filter, which gives a nice, good even wash of a golden yellow, but we're still with that sort of patterning around the edge, but it's the rainbow filtered out. So you can still get the green, not much the blue, but you still get a good red. Let me show you the purple filter. The purple filter is quite a deep colour, but you still get the spectral effect of the edge, predominantly now the blue and the red, because it is a purple filter. Now, we've got a choice of the with the green filters. We've got green with this, a yellow dot in the middle, and a green with the black dot. Now, what the heck? I'll show you them both. One moment. I'm not how sure how well you'll see this, but this is the green wash, but there is that distinct yellow patch in the middle. And you'll be able to see this more when I put the black one in because it's more vivid at the moment. It's not a huge contrast, the yellow in the middle of the green. I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, but the black one is more distinctive. Let me show you it. So here's the green one with the, uh, it's actually a kind of bluish dot in the middle and it does project quite strongly against the wall. I, I don't know why they've done this. Uh, I'm not that keen in this effect, but it doesn't matter because you can just uh, get bits of gel of your own choice or as it happens, you can actually put the choice uh, of LED in that you want. So let's take a closer look at the head, how you change the filters and the LED itself. So changing the filter is very easy. You unscrew the front and effectively the lens and the filter then comes out and inside is just the LED at the back with its little resistor and this bit of foam around here. The bit of foam around there is purely to hold this in. Technically speaking, if you're not going to use these filters, you probably don't need that foam too much unless it's needed for the lens. Actually, you know what? It is needed for the lens, so perhaps keep that in. But let's take a closer look at the LED and how this is so hackable because it really is. It's super... Uh, worth it just for the components. I mean, £4 for all these components is great for such a customisable item. Let me see how close we can get down to take a look at the LED. Super zoomed in because I can. And the aluminium housing here has a recess in the back that is large enough that it looks as though it's designed to take a standard Luxian star. Now, Luxian were one of the first to really introduce the high power LEDs and they're the ones that you, you see the classic Chinese bead LEDs, the one watt and three watt ones.
and the little star housing, they, they kind of pioneered that and were just ripped off rotten by the usual suspects. However, in this case, they've used what looks like a rip-off Cree. I don't know, maybe it is a real Cree, but there always is that doubt because there are so many products just labelled Cree routinely. But this one is physically glued in. You can see this sort of silicon glue at the sides, but it would be so easy to put the larger one in and maybe even drill some holes through it just to actually mount the LED in physically, either with a small self-tappers or better still, little nut and bolt. And the cable itself just comes in the side and taps onto that. Now, if you were using a standard LED, they have used a... Actually, look at my magnifying glass. Let me just zoom down on that resistor. It's a 10 ohm resistor. One, zero, and zero is a multiplier. So based on that, and the fact it's a 5 volt supply, the resistance of the cable as well will be a factor, but the LED will drop about 3 volts. So that leaves 2 volts across that resistor or less. Uh, that's going to be about 150 to uh, 200 milliamps, which is a reasonable amount of power for these. Typically, you'd run a 1 watt LED at 300 milliamps. Uh, but if you wanted to put in a Luxion star in here, you could potentially uh, just have a separate resistor, just external. You could put the star in, you could have the resistor just hang off the side, a decent wattage resistor, uh, and then just, well, use, I guess, 10 ohm resistor again for that. Or if you wanted, you could have a resistor off each side with a 4.7 ohm, just so there's two in series, the leads tacked onto them, but sleeving. But it means that you can actually put in uh, your own choice of LED. You could put a blue one, a green one, although this one uh, with a warm white is actually very good, but it just makes it super customizable. Let me zoom out here a bit. So in general, uh, this light, just for what you're getting, the base, the stem, the actual aluminium housing at the top, and the fact it is so hackable and customizable, it's actually a really good light. So um, well worth getting, really, just for this housing, the cover and the big bullseye lens, uh, which just uh, it makes a good com complement of uh, components to make your own custom light up. So for uh, one beyond, that is yet another win. It's a really good product.